Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a GTX 1070 Ti. I'm ashamed to say that I forgot it existed and it seems I'm not the only one because there are a distinct lack of 1070 Ti benchmarks available online for newer games. Sure you might see performance reviews that still include the 1070 and 1080 and there are plenty of videos here on YouTube looking back at those two popular Pascal cards but the 1070 Ti seems to have slowly faded away since its November 2017 launch. Today we're taking a look at how this card is holding up. Is it still a decent 60fps gamer? Well, let's find out. I want to talk a little more about this specific card first, but feel free to skip ahead using the embedded timestamps if you want to get straight into the gameplay. This OEM Zotac card has come from a pre-built system of some description, and as far as specs go, it sticks to all the standard speeds of a reference card. Despite being a blower version, it's near silent, at idle, and not much louder under load, and I think it looks really good. But now, it's game time. Throughout today's tests we're targeting 60fps and using the highest possible in-game settings that we can while still retaining this average. For example, kicking off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the best bet here is the medium options. Now I've turned depth of field and motion blur off as a personal preference as well. We could use high but there will be more frame dips and medium doesn't really look all that much different. It does however mean that we see far less drops below 60, even in busier areas and settlements. If 1080p 30fps is more your thing, then most if not all games tested today could probably be run with very high or ultra settings. The footage you're about to see for Call of Duty Cold War was taken from a bot match, but the performance figures were taken from an online game when playing the same map. Honestly, the performance difference between bot matches and online games is next to non-existent. I used a mixture of settings here, most of which were high and medium, to try and maintain that plus 60 FPS average, and it's fair to say that we could have turned things up quite a bit higher. It's probably not necessary as the game still looks fantastic, and the more frames you can get with an online FPS title, the better. So far then, so good. The 1070 Ti is holding up pretty well. Crisis Remastered looks great on high settings and runs pretty well too. I did turn ray tracing down to performance though as this helped us maintain a smoother overall frame rate. The only major stutters I experienced were during checkpoint autosaves, hence the 7fps 0.1% low here. Every so often the game just saves randomly and with it comes a very slight freeze. The figures shown during this gameplay are taken from the first level of the game and the FPS will of course increase or decrease depending on which level you're playing. High settings should give you solid performance throughout with the 1070 Ti. So on to Cyberpunk now and here we are going to stick with the low preset I think. Despite this I chose the high textures and I also chose the high crowd density because the game doesn't really perform much different with both of these options set to low, at least not with this hardware. Now I drove around Night City for a bit for this test, which is pretty much what I always do for GPU testing, and while the average frame rate came back as 70 FPS, there will certainly be moments where we see drops below this as represented by the percentile figures. Now before low I tried medium settings for a bit and while these options meant a more than playable frame rate there were more drops and not only that but the drops were more significant. Luckily Cyberpunk 2077 still looks good on low and I expect that we'll be seeing nothing but positive optimizations going forward. After all I remember how bad The Witcher 3 ran when it first came out. Fortnite is running at high with the DX11 API here. You could use performance mode or turn things down to low if you wanted to get as many frames as possible, but I don't think it's really necessary as the game will run great on high. There will be some dips every so often, which seems to be the given with Fortnite, as I tend to experience a couple of random drops here and there, no matter what hardware I'm using. For the most part, of course, the game will run smoothly and pretty much perfectly fine, which I think was expected to be honest on this card. So just as with Fortnite, the 1070 Ti will have no issues with GTA 5, even when cranking these settings right up to very high. 
The advanced options were, however, set to off. And so was MSAA, because it seems to just tank our frame rate and doesn't really give us that much of an advantage other than eliminating a few more of those jaggies, which are pretty much taken care of with FXAA for the most part. Now I still test GTA because despite its age it's very popular and it's seen various patches over the years which means it performs a lot different to how it used to. Though having said that I think the majority of performance improvements do seem to have been with CPU utilisation. These Red Dead Redemption 2 settings meant a great looking game that still ran at plus 60 FPS. There are probably a couple of other things we could turn up a bit, but this combination of ultra, medium and high meant a solid performance throughout my half hour or so of testing. Now the FPS will drop a little bit in Valentine and other towns and cities like Saint Denis, but again for the most part the 1070 Ti is doing a great job. I was just running around here messing with the... Uh, local NPCs, and throughout my time with Red Dead Redemption and the 1070 Ti, the card remained fairly quiet, extremely quiet in fact, and the game continued to run very well. These blower style cards always get a bad name, I think it just tends to be the case regardless of whether uh, people have read reviews or not, you see that single cooler, a single cooling fan sorry, and you just think yeah that's going to be really loud, but just like the 1080 Ti, a reference card that I owned before this 1070 Ti. This is very quiet. So I've thrown the Outer Worlds back in here because it's a good example of a game that I can never predict performance wise. Sometimes it runs really well and sometimes there are a few unwanted stutters that cause a few frame dips. I selected the very high preset which doesn't look any worse than Ultra to be honest though we do still see a few extra frames. I was just exploring this region outside of um, edge water here um, where the frame rate can dip quite a bit depending on some of the enemies you encounter the game overall is quite unpredictable depending on what area you are in i do sometimes get stutters for apparently no reason but i guess that's just the game itself i wouldn't recommend ultra settings in fact very high is probably pushing it a bit because the difference between high very high and ultra is quite negligible to be honest in terms of visuals but as you work your way down through those presets performance will increase so let's move on to our final test of the video then which is Watch Dogs legion medium is the best choice once again for the 1070 ti but i did turn off motion blur and depth of field again for personal preference i just don't like those two things the average one percent and 0.1 percent lows were all very respectable and the 1070 ti still seems like a capable gamer which can still hit 60 fps with relative ease with medium to high settings in a lot of games now it is a shame about the price of everything at the moment but if you want one of these cards then look out for a blower style card as they can be found for less money and despite what you might think they aren't unbearably loud now it doesn't feature the technology that other aftermarket cards might do for example um, the ability to have the fans completely off a lot of these Nvidia cards, these aftermarket ones or third party ones will shut the fans off completely at idle but I find that the Nvidia reference or founders edition cards don't do that but yeah it doesn't really matter because in this case you can't hear it. I wish I knew exactly what pre-built system this card came out of because I think it's a great looking 1070 Ti although it doesn't do anything different from the reference cards in terms of speed well I think it's nice to look at and yeah it's a pretty decent performer still so there we go the 1070 Ti in 2021 still an okay card for 1080p 60 fps gaming if you manage your expectations graphical quality wise with all that said then i hope you've enjoyed this look at the 1070 ti if you did leave a like on it down below leave a dislike if you didn't let me know if you have one of these in the comments down below subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one